thought we'd start this video again by returning to the Kallenberger farming family. In the last video, we looked at what workers were doing. So in this picture, what the, the dad's role and how his dad's life would have changed from 1933 to 1939. In this next video, I'd really like to actually look at a different group of people. I'd like to look at what happened to women between 1933 and 1939. If you remember, I said that we can split the Nazi era into two periods, pre-war and war. And in these set of videos, we're looking at the changing lives of the German people. We're looking at workers, women, young people and persecuted groups. Today, I'd like to focus on women. And the big question we're going to look at is, did the Nazis create a Volksgemeinschaft, which if you remember from last video, was a people's community? Did the Nazis create a people's community for German women? Now. The Nazis had um, quite curious views about women and unsurprisingly quite traditionalist, quite conservative, quite right wing views about women. And the easiest way of working out what Nazis viewed uh, women were or what they wanted women to be like is by looking at propaganda paintings and posters. In this picture here, really famous uh, painting from the Nazi era by Wolfgang Wilrich. This is the Aryan family, and in it you can see um, the woman is centred in the middle of this image. Now this image, to me, tells you everything about what the Nazis wanted for German women. And to summarise that really simply, they wanted women to be traditional German mothers. Traditional German mothers. And this is really, really summed up in a quote from Goebbels at the time. And Goebbels said that the mission of the woman is to be beautiful, and to bring children into the world. The female bird pretties herself for her mate and hatches the eggs for him. This is a sexist view of women and they wanted women to be at home and they wanted women to be looking after the children. Now let's look a little bit more depth at what a traditional German mother was according to the Nazis because some of these things I think you're going to find are quite surprising. They thought that women should not smoke. They thought that smoking led to miscarriages. And as a result, they encouraged German women to not smoke at the time. They thought German women shouldn't wear makeup. It wasn't what traditional German women did. And they thought it was an Americanism to wear makeup. So they encouraged women to not wear makeup. They thought that women should wear traditional German clothes, like this lady's wearing in this picture. They thought women should work in the kitchen and make food for their children and their Aryan husbands. They th thought women should be strong. And if you notice, when you look at Nazi propaganda, German women are always presented as um, quite bulky. They're never tiny, petite women. They're always quite curvy. And they thought this was important because those women were the best for bearing children. And they also thought women should join the National Socialist or the Nazis Women League. And that women's Nazi Women's League had two million members by 1938. It ran training courses and cooking and cleaning. Now the big question I'm hoping you're already asking yourself is, well, why did they want this? Why did they want women to be at home and produce children? And the really simple answer is that they thought they basically wanted more Aryans. They wanted more Aryans to build up their Aryan country and their Aryan race and their Aryan army. And they thought if they encouraged women to have more children, then they would get more babies and those more babies and they would produce this Aryan country. So women should stay at home. Now, the Nazi policies towards women were all geared towards that. They were all geared towards this goal of women producing more Nazis. And there were three main ideas the Nazis wanted to achieve in what we wanted to kind of get towards to basically achieve this goal of having more children. Firstly, they would encourage women to marry. Secondly, they'd encourage women to have more children once they were married. And thirdly, they'd encourage them to stay at home because if they stayed at home, they'd look after their kids and they'd more, like, more likely have more children. Now, in order to encourage women to marry, they offered hugely generous loans to Aryan couples. And really importantly, note this is Aryan couples. 
So if you fit that stereotype of being a traditional natural German, weird as that stereotype might be, if you did that and you gave up work, you were offered a massive loan. And we're talking about a sizable amount of money was given to couples to marry. So this was really trying to encourage people. They also really wanted to encourage women to have more children. So you'd got the loan for being married. That loan would reduce by 25% for each child you produced. In other words, if you had four children, you had no money to pay back. The government basically paid you to have kids. They also gave medals out for women who had lots of children. And this medal, you can see a picture of it here, is called the Honor Cross of the German Mother. And there were three different layers or three different levels of this medal. You could get a bronze medal for having four or five children, a silver medal for six, and a gold medal for eight. That's always quite weird, I think, to people in our age, that you get a medal for having children. But this was their aim, was to produce more kids. And they also really encouraged women to stay at home. So they heavily reduced women's participation at university, which is a terrible thing. And only 10% of students at that time could be female. So they had hoped that by doing these three things, encouraging women to marry, encouraging them to have more children and encouraging them to stay at home, that would lead to this surge in population and that would make new Nazis. So let's work out whether that worked or not. So firstly, they encouraged people to marry. Did that work? It did a bit. So actually marriages do increase from 500,000 really, to nearly 800,000 by the end of the 30s. So in that small period of time, seven years, actually there is an increase and quite a sizable increase in the number of marriages that are happening. They wanted them to have more children. Did that work? A bit. In the early 30s, births did rise, but actually towards the end of the decade, they were already declining. And some historians reckon that births were really rising in the early 30s because actually the economy was starting to pick up again, really, by the middle of the 30s. And that's when births were rising. But by the end of the decade, where war was looming, people weren't so naturally inclined to have children. Did it work with women staying at home? Ish. The number of women in higher education did dramatically fall. So that's something that the Nazis did really achieve. But actually, at the same time, the number of women who were in work hugely increased. So while, when the population and the, sorry, the economy started picking up, women formed a really important part of that workforce. So actually, the number of women who were working, mostly in factories at this time, hugely increased from the start of the 30s to the end of the 30s. So overall, if we're taking this big picture, and I wanted this in this video to look at this question of, did the Nazis achieve what they wanted, this Volksgemeinschaft for women? Not really. And I think that's probably is the really the answer here. Marriages do increase a bit. Births do increase a bit. Not dramatically enough. And really importantly, the Nazi policy about making women stay at home, that didn't really work. And actually it shows that to me, it shows the Nazis weren't really achieving what they wanted to in terms of women, because women at this time were still brilliantly independent and focused on what they wanted to do.